Hi guys, this is Nicole from the North Bergen Public Library. Today I'm going to read you a few pages from one of my favorite books. Please feel free to read along with me at home using Hoopla. You can access Hoopla through our library's website using your library card. Today I'm going to read you a few pages from Mr. Popper's Penguins by Richard and Florence Atwater. Still Water. It was an afternoon in late September. In the pleasant little city of Stillwater, Mr. Popper, the house painter, was going home from work. He was carrying his buckets, his ladders, and his boards so that he had a rather hard time moving along. He was spattered here and there with paint and calcimine, and there were bits of wallpaper clinging to his hair and whiskers, for he was a rather untidy man. The children looked up from their play to smile at him as he passed, and the housewives, seeing him, said, Oh dear, there goes Mr. Popper. I must remember to ask John to have the house painted over in spring. No one knew what went on inside of Mr. Popper's head, and no one guessed that he would one day be the most famous person in Stillwater. He was a dreamer. Even when his busiest smoothing down the paste on the wallpaper or painting the outside of other people's houses, he wouldn't forget what he was doing. Once he had painted three sides of the kitchen green and the other side yellow, the housewife, instead of being angry and making him do it over, had liked it so well that she had made him leave it that way. And all the other housewives, when they saw it, admired it too, so that pretty soon everybody in Stillwater had two colored kitchens. The reason Mr. Popper was so absent-minded was that he was always dreaming about faraway countries. He had never been out of Stillwater. Not that he was unhappy. He had a nice little house of his own, a wife whom he loved dearly, and two children named Janie and Bill. Still, it would have been nice, he often thought, if he could have seen something of the world before he met Mrs. Popper and settled down. He had never hunted tigers in India, or climbed the peaks of the Himalayas, or dived for pearls in the South Seas. Above all, he had never seen the poles. That was what he regretted most of all. He had never seen those great shining white expanses of ice and snow. He had wished that he had been a scientist instead of a house painter in Stillwater, so that he might have joined some of the great polar expeditions. Since he could not go, he was always thinking about them. Whenever he heard that a polar movie was in town, he was the first person at the ticket window, and often he sat through three shows. Whenever the town library had a new book about the Arctic or the Antarctic, the North and South Pole, Mr. Popper was the first to borrow it. Indeed, he had read so much about polar ex explorers that he could name all of them and tell you what each had done. He was quite an authority on this subject.